It's movie night. Movie night. Movie night. Okay. What are we watching? We're watching Salem's Lot. The, on the only Stephen King book that I have that I've not seen the movie for. No, I haven't. That's why I bought it. <laughs> I know it's creepy in the, well, not creepy, but I know the effects look decent. So we'll be back with you in a minute. So here's Salem's Lot in all of its glory. It's not very too glorious. Are you ready? I am ready. This film. I, just, I don't know, I really appreciate this cover, especially since um, I'm a fan of the band Ghost, and they have that for their first album, like a parody version of that. It's really cool, so. Yeah. Neither also, the guy seen. on the cover, like the actual cover, he looks a little like Nosferatu. So I'm also looking forward to that. Yeah, this is th this is one of the very rare occasions where I've read the Stephen King book over the uh, over watching the movie. I have read the prequel to Salem's Lot though, because it was in the same book that Children of the Corn was in. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. called Jerusalem's a lot and then Children of the Corn too actually has a connection with this this movie so we might have to watch that at some point so yeah okay so we'll be back with you later oh my gosh what what did we just sit through we sat through Salem's Lot the 1979 miniseries that was not the best three hours I've ever had no um, so we kind of were anticipating that, since it was a miniseries split in two, two halves, that we kind of gave up after 44 minutes in, realizing that there wasn't anything going to be picking up in the first half of the movie, which would be like an hour and a half of the movie. Hour 40 minutes before anything Yeah, happened. and we were like, oh, well, maybe it'll pick up in the, towards the end. And, I mean, in some senses, it did. I'd say the last half hour was okay. Last yeah, 30. for a three-hour movie. That's, that's a big portion of it. Not okay. Yeah. It's a very slow movie. Um, you really don't care about the main characters all that much. And the side characters are way more entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, in all honesty, if there was to be like a director's cut of this, there's like a whole portion that is the most interesting part of the beginning that I feel like should be cut because it just doesn't have anything to do with the main story. And I mean... I guess technically I wouldn't be saying much either because a good portion of the beginning would also be cut, in my opinion. Should be. The love interest was the worst part of the story. Like, a good 30 minutes of the beginning is dedicated to that. Then she goes off to Boston for, like, five days. And then she comes back at the very end, and then she's the big plot twist at the end. Waste of a uh, story. I think the best thing about this... And it's really the only reason why it's kind of in the position it's in. Um, the, the main vampire, we, we dubbed him Nosferatu. and it was always fun. It was really fun to see him. They did him dirty at the end. Definitely. We actually yeah. clapped when he got on screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, his, the ending with him was very anticlimactic, which, I mean, I guess for this movie, I guess not because there wasn't any interesting things happening. Yeah. So it kind of was a sneak peek to it. You could definitely tell it was a, a TV series from the 70s. Yeah. Um, had a lot of random cuts, a lot of um, unnecessary character development, um, scene scene switches. Like you would, there was this one part where um, these guys were delivering like a box, and um, they're you know they're taking the box, and all of a sudden we switch over to this kid in his room, and all of a sudden we switch back to them. Like why didn't you like why didn't they just finish out the scene? 
Oh, I will say this. Throughout the movie, there were like some really, I thought some really cool parts sprinkled here and there. Yeah. Speaking of the kids, later on, not the scenes we're talking about, but like later on in the story, whenever the kids are knocking on windows, I felt like those were always well done, and yeah. the kids were actually very creepy. Yeah, when the um, they had the vampire kids, those were done pretty well. I will say they they were a lot creepier. Um, close, I mean farther away and close up. I felt like all the kids were creepier than, like, whenever they did, like, adult vampire stuff, it just didn't hit as well. Yeah, the kids definitely were pretty good vampires. Yeah, yeah. there's really not much. Yeah, I don't know if I would, I don't know if i recommend it. There's definitely not a lot of rewatchability out of it. The only rewatchable parts are, uh, Bob. Which I, uh, I got him yeah. out of the whole movie. Yeah, uh, his name's not actually Bob, we just called him Bob. Because of Stranger Things. Yeah. And then anything with Nosferatu. Yeah. And the kid scenes, but that's really about it. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. yeah, that's really all I have to say. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was good to watch it. I mean, I would never have guessed being this let down from, you know, reviews and it being considered a classic, you know, this and that. But no, I guess it was good to have it under the belt now, so. Yeah. You know. We got it through. We have a really cool steel book for it, which has Nosferatu on it, which I feel like is cool to just have in the collection. Yeah. And we're well. I mean, I'm a huge Stephen King fan, so I mean, and yeah, I'd say you're. Oh, I mean, like of his movies, I've never read any of his books, but I mean, don't worry, I'm forcing him to watch movies. I think our next Stephen King movie is going to be Pet Cemetery, unless I can get Christi- Christine. Which is the car movie. Oh, yeah. It has one of the guys from Jaws 2 in it as the lead role. So, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it, so. Mm-hmm.